So you know the sidebar in kick.com, right? It lists all of the channels that you follow and channels that are recommended. I made it possible for you to see the stream title right there. And I added this feature to my extension. There's a link in the description down below. I live streamed the entire development process on kick.com. You got to see every single line that I wrote. I hooked into a view component and modified the template, messed with C indexes and hidden overflows. Then I had to request data from Kick's private API. Did you miss these streams? Don't worry about it. Yet it is. I didn't think that just adding a tooltip would lead me down this rabbit hole of hacking view to the point where I reverse engineered how refs work. I'm now able to create my own refs and how virtual DOM nodes are created so I can create my own. I need to create a tooltip element. I want to add a tooltip when you put your mouse on top of somebody who you're following or somebody who's recommended. I was pretty close to getting it done. This one says fetching title, right? I'm gonna put my mouse there, fetching title, and now it changed to title set for chatium, but the tooltip still shows fetching title. I, wa I thought this would have been possible, you know. Anyway, I hooked into view, found the component that represents these items, and I changed its render function. So here's the code. Lots of, lots of, lots of lines there. I added new virtual nodes. This is the tooltip node. I'm now at the point where I need to declare a reactive variable with the title of the stream. But I also, additionally, have to find the title of the stream. I gotta fetch it from somewhere. I think I'm just gonna use the API to get it. Because it's not available in the list. I was hoping it, it was there, but it, it's not. So the tooltip has got to show that it's loading. And then it will be able to display the title. I'm reusing classes that you'll find in kick.com. That way, it's going to have the same look and feel as everything else on kick. It's also going to make it easy for me to customize the theme. Because it's just using the same classes. I remember that I was able to place the node in the DOM, but for some reason I'm not able to change the display. It's, it always remains display none. So what if I made it display block? Am I going to be able to see the thing? Let's see. Mm, I don't see any block. I inspect this. There it is. Display block position absolute, but I don't see... Oh yeah, I gotta, I gotta position this. I didn't give it any coordinates, so I don't know where it is. But let's, oh, let's, oh, let's give it a top and a left. So where did it go? Uh, I don't see it. Yeah, I, I don't see the thing. So I placed top and left, but I don't remember placing any content. Oh, there it is. It should display loading. Mm-hmm. So why don't we see it? It should be somewhere on the page. Let me use my inspector to find it. Where are you? Four by four uh yeah where's the text the text is missing so i definitely screwed up somewhere it is there right there uh -huh. hmm. i placed children i gave it gave it text but it didn't react to it so this is the problem for some reason it's ignoring the children and i think it might have to do with oh there it is patch flag oh uh, maybe why aren't you using the children? Why are you ignoring them? I'm gonna try hard coding something here. The children. <gasps> so I wanna see that piece of text right there. Nothing? Seriously? Could it be that I misspelled the property? I think not. I remember seeing the children. Where is it? Where's the thing? Oh, that this view component API. The view component hooker. And it might have something to do with the shape. I remember there being a property that uh, makes it so that the children are used. Oh, I have an idea. I'm gonna place a breakpoint in the render function. There should be a couple of divs. I could take a look at the other children. I'll place them here. Okay, it should break. And it did. And we got a bunch of nodes here. Let me take a look at them. I know that some of them are divs. There we go, two divs. Yes. And they should have children. Ah, uh, but they're divs as well. What about the other one? Uh, they're divs too, but I know that one of them has text. No, this one's got more children. 
which has more children. Oh, this one's got text. So, children is 12. Patch flag is 1. Mm, patch flag 1 means text. Yes. So it is just text. Anything else that is different? There's the shape flag, which is a 9. And I picked element, which is 1. Another thing that is different. Text children. Ah, uh, I see. I need to enable this one. I need text children. Otherwise, it's not going to work. I wonder what the creator of you would think if he saw me going through all of this. View component API. Shape flag. Text children. And now it should display the children. Should be able to see something now. But the text is there. Yes, I see the children. There they are. They're not where I wanted them to be. That's that right there. It looks like the sidebar, the whole sidebar, that rectangle, this big, big rectangle that you see here is the parent with either position relative or position absolute, the closest parent with one of those properties. So all I need to do is just add position relative to the sidebar item and I'll be able to position the tooltip relative to the item. And I also need to find a background because I can tell that it's transparent. I did add BG gray, so it should have been using a background color. Why did it not? But I swear I saw BG gray somewhere. Could it be that they removed it? What if it was 900? Of course, 900 makes more sense. I misspelled it. I don't know where I got 90, but that is definitely wrong. Yes, it's no longer transparent. Now let's place it in, a, 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 in the right place. And oh, let's even put the correct text back. So no more the children, but it should now say loading. Okay, so loading is there. Let's position it properly. I like to be able to rely on a parent, a parent with position relative our position absolute that makes sense. And I think that the sidebar item should definitely have position relative. The node that is returned by the render function is most likely gonna always be the thing that contains the whole thing. So style is gonna have position relative. Usually position relative just doesn't do any harm. Usually though, sometimes it may. Let's hope it's not this time. Come on, man. Yes, every single one of them has their corresponding loading tooltip, box, whatever you want to call it. Now, I need to center it um, vertically because I want the tooltip to be uh, placed right here on the right side. So instead of left 0, we're going to have left 100. And instead of top 0, we're going to have 50%. And we're going to also introduce transform. I hope it's not using transform already. I will need to transform, I, need, uh, I mean, I will need to translate, translate y minus 50% up. That's gonna make it centered. Watch, it's gone. <gasps> I, hope I, I, I hope I made a mistake. I really hope it was because the code failed and not because it's just not randomly. Oh no, oh, oh no, this is not good. Let me... Let me put 50% left, and I fear it's gonna show up now. Oh, God, no! Oh, no! Okay, it's gonna be more complicated than I thought. The problem... The problem here is the fact that the sidebar has overflow hidden somewhere. So anything that overflows is just automatically hidden. I've got two options. I can either place the node in the body Place it in the body. Outside of views control. Oh, I wanted I wanted to let view have control over it. And the other option is to remove the overflow. Let me see how easy it would be to remove the overflow. But then again, it's there for a reason. Maybe I should not mess with it. Let me put left 100% again. So it's now positioned to the right, but we're not able to see it because of an overflow. Let's inspect this. See if we can find it. We have a relative here. We've got flex grow overflow hidden. You. Okay, we found the problem. If I were to remove that. Oh. Oh no. That means there's another. This was not the only one. Oh, could it be the sidebar class? 
there it is, overflow hit in the side of our class. If I were to remove this, um, still not showing up, that means this, it's not this one. So if it's not that one, oh, this is the one that I, where I add a position relative. Does it happen to have overflow hidden? The answer is yes. God damn it. Yes, it does. Okay, I've removed it and are you serious? The freaking tooltip now actually shows up. It's there. You can see it a little bit, but the player is on top of it. So you cannot really see it. So my plan to use position absolute is just not gonna work. I will need to use position fixed and I will need to figure out where the sidebar item is and then I'm gonna have to position the tooltip close to it. So I wonder if I can get a coordinate from this event. If so, I might not set tooltip open to true. I might just literally save the coordinates there. An object with the coordinates. Oh, oh god, a lot of things here. So yes, there's a client X and a client Y in a way. This tells me where the mouse is. Uh, but I don't want the mouse. So I'll, I'll just use target. Okay, but target might not always be the element that I'm looking for. Though. You know what? I'll just give it a try. If it doesn't work, it's okay. It's gonna be an easy fix if broken. So I've got the target and now I need to get the offset X or client position or whatever it was from this element. What the heck is that V? Left and client top. So these two, they're set to zero, which means they're probably relative to the nearest, the nearest element that is, uh, that has position relative or fixed or absolute or itself if itself is position relative absolute or fixed which it is so that's why it's probably zero so that's not the one that i want uh, there's another one offset top and offset left oh but oh okay so this one is about the parent mm. okay so no this is not giving me the values that i want i will need to add these values to the offset parent of their parent recursively mm, i don't want to do that this i remember there being a function that you could call and would give you all of that sweet sweet information i forgot its name though let me see if i can find it get client rect oh there it is and oh yeah <laughs> top and left i believe those are relative to the viewport so I'll be using that. This thing becomes position fixed. Top and left are gonna have to be controlled by me. And now, over here, I have this tooltip open thing, right? Anytime a variable changes, it calls the render function. All I need to do is assign the corresponding values. It would be a lot more convenient to do this, maybe in a function, so that I have all of the code organized, because it's looking like a mess now function render tooltip and i will need the view component api i will need uh, the tooltip text variable i will need the tooltip open i'm gonna have to calculate ah oh, that fucking hurt oh that hurt so i'm gonna have a style object and by default it's gonna have always position and transform and here, if tooltip open is not null, I'll scratch my back and then I'm gonna assign style left tooltip open x and top is gonna be y. Oh, I just realized I gotta add px. So I will not set display to none yet. I just want to see it. I'll do that later. So now I need to set tooltip open to an object that's going to have X and Y. And then later, I'm going to have to figure out how to uh, position the tooltip. Because in this very moment, I don't have a reference to the element. It's being rendered. Uh, I don't have a reference to the element. And I need its width and its height to be able to position the tooltip to the right side and vertically centered. But uh, we'll take care of that next. So over here in tooltip open, first, 
it starts out as null. Second, it's gonna be set to an object. And third, I need to call that function again. This thing. Get bounding client rect. And right now I'm just gonna assign x to left and y to top. At this point, I do have a reference to the element, which means I can get the width and the height. In fact, it's right there. It's right there. Great idea. Genius idea. There, I'll do something with that later. Oh, this promise here. Do you see that promise? I am supposed to make a request to get the title of the stream. So right now it's just simulating something silly there. But I, I, will, I will do that. I will get to that later. So I do have tooltip open assigned an object. But then later on it's going to be assigned false. But that is wrong. It's got to be null. So it's either null or an object. Hold on a second. Oh yeah. I need to call render tooltip. That's very, very important. Without that, I don't have a tooltip. Tooltip node is being pushed down there. So I guess I could just build it down there. Let's try. So there's loading. Loading is right there. And uh, it's not moving around. Then I forgot to do something important. I did say position fixed, but the placement just didn't seem right. It's like it's not going here. The moment that I put my mouse on top of it, it should have gone into this block, up to the left and top. What if I need to... Uh, oh, that looks wrong. Yes, it's updating. Oh, that's nice. It's, it's, oh god, that's a mess. Oh, holy crap, what are you doing there? No, what, what the? Oh, okay, it's moving around, but it's not moving how I want it to move. It's, it's a mess, and it's still being cut off. Oh, what the heck? Just as I feared, the target is not always the anchor element. But could it be that this node right here could have the EL property set at the time that mouse hover happens? It's a good chance. Let's actually try. Node EL. So that should stop the twitching. Uh -huh. Yes, it stopped the twitching. So it's always getting the same element. That's good. Let me now position it properly. I've got the width and the height. So over... Yeah. I just need to add the entire width. And down there, I need to add half the height. Cannot access tooltip node before initialization. Oh, okay. So now, I put my mouse on top of it. Ah, oh, there it is. It's in the right place. But it's being hidden by the freaking player. I really hope that a Z index fixes this problem. Let's see. Let's try a Z index of 1. And I can now put display none. When you put your mouse on top of it. There it is. But the Z index was not enough. So now I need to figure out what Z index is going to be high enough. If only there was a way to take a look at every single Z index in the DOM. Wait, I'm a software developer. I can do that. <laughs> okay, there it goes. So let, let's take a look at Z indexes. And we've got a lot of them. The highest Z index that I see here is a thousand, although there could be more. Just because we're seeing a thousand here doesn't mean that there's only a thousand. It just means that of all the elements that are being displayed right now, a thousand is the highest one. And I think it's the top bar. The notifications, the alerts, I'm probably not in the dumb right now. Mm, I don't really like big Z indexes. Oh, wait, I have an idea. I'm gonna go with 11, then 21, then 51. Uh, looks like somebody already <laughs> tried. And I want to use the smallest number possible just to have that thing show up. Let's try 11. Oh, 11 is enough. <laughs> I'll leave it. So, ta da It actually is working. The title, I still have to fetch the title. Still, we made progress. Oh, that's so nice. So I got the behavior of the tooltip right. Oh, that's so good. Now, <gasps> might just need to place a shadow. Shadow, shadow? Barely tell. If it's, if it's subtle, then it's really, really subtle. Oh, rounded. The class rounded. I wasn't looking for this, but that's nice. That's really good. <laughs> I appreciate it. But I want 
Shadow. Oh, hey, I have an idea. Oh, I have a really, really great idea. So the code that I made to get all of the Z indexes can be adapted to give me all of the shadows. Da -da. Now, oh, 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 wow, what the? So there's only two, none, and then RGBA, uh, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. Who's this element? Is it a class in here? Shadow! Oh, <laughs> it's literally called shadow. I can't even tell that there's a shadow. Oh, it might be because this rat is really, really dark. Let's, let's pick a different color. Let's go with, uh, Ice Poseidon. Oh, yes. Do you see it? Really subtle, but I like it. So the goal now is to get the title of the stream. All I need to do is make a request to the API that gives me the stream title. I think there is an API that is just really responsible for giving you the stream information. We're gonna see now. So I need to go to network. But I'm logged in, which is very, very dangerous because you could take a look at my session token and steal it. I'm not gonna make it easy for you. So instead, I'm gonna open incognito and I'm gonna take a look at all of the requests being made. Cake token provider chat. Oh, there it is. Yeah, this is the one that I was looking for. So it's channels, V1 channels. So let me put this in the code V1 channels, channel name. Ah, oh, it's not the channel name, it's the slug. So channel slug. Body data, nothing. And it's not a post, it's a get. So we're gonna have data, and I think I'm just gonna return the data as is. Yeah. No abstraction, just return this best. So somewhere here, there's a live stream object, there it is. And it tells me the title right here, session title. And if I'm not mistaken, when you're not live, it shows up as null. We're gonna double check though. So Deepak. You're not live. Why are you not live? I don't want to hear an apology. And live stream is null. Okay, so if live stream is null, I need to make sure that my code does not crash. So I can't just assume that somebody is live just because they're in the sidebar. You may have left the page open for too long. It may be outdated. So I will need to check if live stream is null. And what happens if somebody is banned? Is banned? Uh. You know what? I, I am gonna check this field as well. If somebody is banned, I'll just sh I'll just show the text banned. So I'm gonna check if they're banned, and then if they're not banned, I'm gonna check live stream. And if they're not live, I will show not live. If they are live, I'll show the session title. That is the plan. Three checks. Kick API get channel info needs the channel slug and the off token. I don't have the off token here. Uh, I will try without it. Let's see what happens. So channel slug is in the um, user username. No, I need the user slug. I think it's user slug, but I should probably double check. Definitely double check. So I'm gonna create a function. So if data is banned, in this case, well, ha ha ha, banned. I accidentally put a in uppercase, but you know what? It looks funny. I might just leave it like that. If they're not banned, we're gonna check if live stream exists. So if they are live, return the session title. Simple. So let's let's see this in action for the very first time. Oh, I'm excited. Okay. So I am live. Hey, I'm not offline. What the heck? What the heck? What the heck? I'm gonna place a breakpoint. Okay. So data slug undefined oh my god <laughs> so yeah there's a user called undefined hey how many followers do they have 78 all of them most likely bots with bugs <laughs> anyway you just gotta figure out where this undefined came from because that was a mistake uh so over here it's not a user slug what was it then and I have, um, channel slug. <laughs> it's called channel slug. Ah, I don't think so. Yes! That's my stream title! Sick is now featured in the Chrome Web Store! Wait, why did it show 404? Well, it happened again. 404, something went wrong. I don't know 
I don't know if my code is responsible for this. Any errors? 429. That sounds awfully familiar. I think it's the throttling. It might be making too many requests. I needed to cache, so npm install memoyz import memoyz is the name of the function from memoyz so memoyz the function max h is gonna be a thousand multiplied by 60 can you guess what that is and it's done it's now caching it's this simple i'm gonna put my mouse there I made a request for DPEG and Chatium because I put my mouse on top of both of them. And now I'm going to put my mouse on top of them again. And there's no request, but it will. It will make a request after 60 seconds. So bear with me while we wait. Guess what? It's been a minute. So if I put my mouse there, it made a request. Same thing for DPEG. And if I put my mouse there again, it does not make another request. So there, it's now being cached. We can ship this. And it was shipped. See you next stream.